Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we'll be taking a look at the Edge series by George C. Gilman, aka Terry Harknett. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look. Okay then, so we'll start off with book number one and um, we'll go through the series and I'll sort of give you a few facts and figures about it because it really is quite an interesting series and incredibly, incredibly successful. So, um, well, first of all, there's 61 in the set and only recently have I been able to track down the very final volume that I was after, which was actually number 60, not 61, but the tail end ones are by far the scarcest ones to find. And I think it's probably because the print runs had uh, reduced by then. But here in the UK, they were published by the New English Library, or, you know, as some unfortunately collectors have coined them, the New English Lavatory, referring to the paper quality that their books are actually printed on. So this is the first one. It's not a first edition. It's a reprint of the first, but it's still pretty early, 1973. So we are looking at, well, as I film this, 50 years old. And, um, you know, this is much, much better than average. Some of my copies, I kid you not, are pretty much falling to bits, but I don't care because, um, you know, I've bought them to read predominantly, um, but the tail end ones, perhaps I'll, I'll take a little bit more care with those because they are, um, as I said, quite, quite collectible. So this is the very first one. And um, as I said, George G. Gilman was actually a pseudonym for a chap called Terry Hartnett. And he was born in 1936 and died just a few years back in 2019. I would have absolutely loved to have met him and interviewed him. But he was a British author um, and he wrote in his lifetime almost 200 books under v you know, numerous pseudonyms. Um, pulp novels, Western crime. Um, but his most famous and successful creation was definitely the Edge series. Um, Hartnett was regarded as one of the Piccadilly Cowboys, um, a moniker shared by a handful of British authors in the 1970s and 80s who themselves had never actually set foot in America. Gilman's other long-running Western series was one called Adam Steele, which I've not got into at all yet, but that ran for 49 books. And uh, the two characters, Edge and Adam Steele do actually meet up in three books. Um, so the books are most famous for their sardonic and sarcastic humour and for their very violent content. And in the US, says US publisher would brand them the most violent Westerns in print. And boy, oh boy, they, they really are, you know. Um, here's number two as we uh, work our way through. So The Loner is the first one. Definitely, definitely start with that one and probably do go into number two as well but after that you can pretty much read them in any order that you find them although I'm an absolute stickler for reading books in the order that they were published so I wouldn't do that but many people do shall we say um, and, and you're not going to be apart from a few flashbacks in later novels uh, to what's happened in a few earlier ones um, you're not going to be too far uh, adrift you know um, and you know these were first published in 1972 they're, they're paperback originals although there are some hardbacks in existence, which are like two books published as one for a hardback edition. Because as you can see, the books are really, really short. They're just you know, 120 pages. You can read them in, in an hour or two. So uh, not, not that difficult to fly through. And now the premise of the series is that Captain Josiah Hedges, which is uh, this guy here, um, uh, returns from the Civil War to his family farm in Iowa, only to discover that his little brother has been brutally murdered. And it is pretty, pretty horrific, the description of the death. Now, Josiah's vendetta towards the five men who did it, who also served under his command in the Union Army during the, the American Civil War. So in classic revenge style, Edge follows the trail of the five men, getting into brief bits of trouble along the way and eventually catching up with them in Arizona. The finale is a nice payoff and serves well to set up the rest of the series, which it absolutely does. Now, I don't want to go into too many gory details about the books um, in this video. Suffice to say that they are quite, quite graphic, even for the 1970s. And um, but. I've never, when I've been reading them, I've never felt that they went a bit too far, if that makes sense. So I've never thought, oh, that's just like ridiculous. Um, but be aware that they are perhaps not, you know, you might be a little bit surprised to begin with. All right. Um, but, you know, Hartnett was a, was a great writer and uh, the books really flow. Um, the more you get through them, a bit like a lot of these long running um, sort of Western series and men's adventure series, you sort of know exactly what you're going to get. And they do become quite, quite sort of formulaic. 
here's number eight here seven out of hell now although they're not all by the same artist a lot of these covers were painted by a chap called w francis phillips now my friend tim kitchen he runs the pan collectors website and he has got a big collection of original paperback artwork and he's actually got three original jackets um um by i believe the author so what i do i've got that bit of footage saved when i, I saw them i visited tim and um, i shall pop that bit of footage in there now not three by w francis phillips ah oh, yes oh <laughs> Maybe are these edges are they yeah and oh, that, this one was an edge isn't it yeah i think he looks as though he's <laughs> i don't know he doesn't look quite natural somehow but they're all w francis phillips yeah these two are adam Steele. yeah and that's um edge i wrote on the back vengeance valley and that one is the killing art <laughs> Crossfire. Lovely. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? Yes. Nice, nice trio. They'd look good all framed up in a, in a set of three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a... There it is, yeah. It's number 17. Yes. I have got the other two as well, is not it? Okay, if you ever right. want to sell this one, just bear me in mind. Let's <laughs> <laughs> so work our way through. Here's number 12 here. Biggest Bounty. I said a lot of mine are very, very the worst for wear, but I don't really mind, you know, the 13. I just did want to have them as the set. Um, I remember actually as a kid going into some of the secondhand bookshops in Independence. There's one in my hometown called Bonus Books, and they had a big run of these. They'd always have pretty much the full set on display. And although I always sort of fancied them, I never, back then, I never got into them. It was only a few years ago perhaps five years ago, I started reading the Odd Western. And I, I found some really good ones, in actual fact. I think it's a, quite an underrated genre. Um, and maybe, you know, one that I think's had a little bit of a revival um, in the world of, sort of paperback collecting as well. Is it number 18? So you are seeing, I have got the full run now of 61, so you'll be able to see the uh, the full set in this video. Number 19, albeit not in the greatest of condition, but they are all there. <laughs> 20. Now, back in 2015, Amazon Studios, who were just getting into making uh, TV back then uh, through the Amazon Prime, they did actually do um, a pilot for the Edge TV series, which is actually quite closely based on the very first novel. I mean, I mean, it pretty much is an adaptation of the first book. And I thought it was really excellent. It's still ultra violent uh, maybe a bit too violent i thought but um you know it was uh, uh adapted by shane black and fred decker and also directed by shane black and uh, i thought it was really good it was a good faithful retelling of the first book and uh, such a shame that it never uh never got the go ahead for the uh the full series because they would have had plenty of source material to pull on so that's the first at 24 i'm going to make a bit of room now here's uh, 25 there violence trail 26 27 and um, some of these I found so so much easier to find than others really um, I had a real job finding a, a reasonably priced copy of the first one because it is sort of essential to read the first one um, so I did end up buying it on Kindle which I don't usually do. And boy, was I disappointed. The proofreading in that is just absolutely appalling. So avoid the ebook versions of these because I think they've pretty much all been done. Avoid them like the plague. Just pick up the uh, the actual original books. And I pretty much got all of these cheap off eBay, off those uh, sort of um, uh, those booksellers which sell like, you know, buy two books, get 20% off. You know, the ones who do mass remainders. It's just really from books about number 54 upwards. The last few are super, super scarce. Um, I've seen number 61 sell for £100. I've actually seen that sell for that. Um, I was lucky. I got a little lot. Admittedly, the books were laminated, but um, that included number 61. And I paid about £10 each for the final few. And the very last one I needed was actually number 60 not 61 and I finally got a copy after waiting for about a year to get one at a decent price for 25 pound so it was the most I paid for any of them but I wanted to get it just to finish the set and it is a nice 
nice copy some of these i think you know i've, I've got actually a little run of doubles because i've already upgraded some as i've come across them and i've made a little note of the ones i want to upgrade uh, down the line so it's like changing in cover art now 41 and there's 42 they really really are quite something out there they do look superb when we get them all together as a set there's sort of 43 here 44 and it's funny i always thought the look of the guy seemed to be more a cross between say lee van cleef and Newell brunner now 45 is a change in the cover design there so the traditional edge circle is gone they are very clearly numbered though so i think the uh the name of the game was to certainly get people to uh to buy them all 125 and let's just see when this change was published um 1983 so they've been going just a touch over 10 years for the first 45 books and these ones this is where they start to get a little bit harder to find um you you might get lucky um but generally these are a little bit harder to find and i guess it just must be Either the genre was, you know, sort of waning a little bit, the Western genre by this point, um, you know, early to mid 80s. Um, and the print runs just must have got reduced. So uh, this is the sort of the last hurrah for New English Library, wasn't it? And it's 49. Now for the 50th book, they did actually release a double sized one. So it's, it's like, got the logo there in, in gold embossed, which is quite nice. You sometimes see this one go for a few few pounds more because it is the 50th one and uh, yeah 1985 and there's a little list there and then they've got the edge meets adam steel books down the bottom i said i've not tried the adam steels i know a few people have they collect the two series almost side by side and they say that they're also pretty good um i think there's another one called the undertaker as well nothing to do with the uh, the wrestler which once again i haven't tried now this last little run 51 to 61 are perhaps the scarcest of them all and um as I said, you might get lucky. Certainly the cheapest way, if you're going to start buying these and collecting them, is to pick up a set, you know, just like a job lot. Maybe not a set, but a job lot. And I think you'll do well there. Save a lot of, um, you know, buying the books individually and paying extra sort of postage. But these are all quite, quite scarce now. It's 54. And I remember some of these I did have, have to end up paying between 8 and £10 pounds each for these tail end ones. And just the last couple uh, were a bit more expensive. It's 55. Doomtown, 56. Now, this is a little lot. So this one, number 57, these are laminated, but they came from Waterstones. And this is when Waterstones, for a little while, used to do, um, in the bigger branches, they used to do, like, book exchanges so um these were all picked up and they cost me about eight pound each um, and, but they're all laminated so i don't mind because i said predominantly these are to be read um, but that was a real bargain price because it's kept the books really nice condition but it's not um you know they didn't cost a fortune basically this was the very last one i got so number 60 a man uh number the breed woman took a long time to find a copy of that and i took a punt because there wasn't a picture of the spine but as I said, I got that one for uh, £25. And 61 I got as part of that um, that cheap lot. I paid, I paid like I think £8 each. I got the four books from that for um, £32, £8 each, yeah. So I did very well, because I have seen that sell for £100, this one. I don't think it's ever worth that. But like a lot of these series, like the final volume of the uh, the Pan Book of Horror Stories, for example, uh, the new writings in SF, it seems like the final volumes had really really small print runs and makes them uh, tricky to find today if we look at the little uh list there there we are it's the full series all 60 plus the three crossovers and there we are 1989 that final volume was published so uh yeah a 17 year run and there we are that is the complete edge series and uh, great fun to collect really really good fun to read if you're in that particular mood you know ultra violent revenge in a western setting you can't go far wrong as i said they are quite formulaic but 
you know, great fun to collect. Only 61 of them, so it's not the end of the earth. And just a few tougher ones towards the end. Uh, but do definitely try the first few because I think you'll you'll very easily get hooked on these. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed looking through that edge collection certainly a fun series to collect if you have enjoyed today's video do please give it the thumbs up do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content and i'll look forward to seeing you again very soon bye